Hello and welcome to Bespoke Unit, I'm CP and in this video I'm going to be reviewing the Mombacho Chera Volcan. As per usual, we will be reviewing this cigar according to the Bespoke Unit Cigar Formula, a quantifiable review matrix that you can use at home. Look in the description and you'll find a link which will take you to a guide which teaches you how to use it as well as provides you with some PDF downloadable. Moreover, usually I use the Bogado acrylic humidor that you can see behind me to store the cigars, but on this rare occasion I had an entire box and rather than cramming the whole thing in there, I uh, used a cooler door which I built not too long ago which simulates the environment very closely and these were maintained using 69% Boveda packs and monitored as well as per usual with a Boveda butler. If you want to learn more about how to build a cooler door there are videos on this channel and there's a link below to see our guide. I have to admit that I'm particularly fond of Mombacho, not least because Paul and I visited the uh, factory in Nicaragua along with uh, Roy Summer of uh, Davidoff Cigars. Um, it's a beautiful location. Unlike the majority of uh, cigar brands in Nicaragua, it's based in Granada, which is in the south, uh, just off the Granada Lake, where, which is where the name comes from, uh, whereas the majority of factories can be found in the northern Esteli region. Uh, therefore, they set themselves apart and they're one of the only producers uh, in that area, and in fact the only one I personally know of. On top of that, Mombacho operates from this beautiful late 19th century uh, historical building that was built by an Italian architect called Mario Favelli. For this reason, it has been named Casa Favelli, and Mombacho have been working very hard at renovating, preserving the building, keeping its original spirit, yet uh, reworking it so it can become a fully fledged cigar factory. And indeed, the ground floor is fully operational with uh, an ent entire guerrera that stretches across the uh, whole side of the building, as well as storage facilities for aging and uh, pr preparing tobacco. Additionally, this rich Italian heritage is continued and preserved by Claudio Zagroi, who oversees all the blends and the production of Mombacho cigars. Claudio himself is an Italian who was born in Sicily and uh, started his cigar career at Davidoff Cigars. Paul and I had the very great pleasure of meeting Claudio, who taught us around Mombacho's facilities. The Mamacho Tierra Volcan, which means Land of Volcano, is a beautiful Nicaraguan Puro. In my hand I have the Fino, which is a, a long uh, Grande Corona or potentially even a Panatella. Uh, this is probably my favourite um, Vitola of the range, but it is available in other sizes. There are some Toros, there are also some Robustos. As mentioned earlier, it's uh, assembled at Casa Fivelli in Granada, Nicaragua. The method uh, employed is the accordion style of uh, Hetero Mano manufacturing, and uh, as mentioned, it is a Nicaraguan puro. So the wrapper is a Jalapa Habano seed, the binder is a Nicaraguan Condega, and the filler is Nicaraguan Jalapa and Nicaraguan Condega. So as you can see, two different regions have been used to produce the cigar, which is just Condega and Jalapa, there's no Esteli or Ometepe in it, is quite an intriguing uh, focus on two of Nicaragua's most well-known uh, tobacco producing regions. Jumping into the look and feel, well I have an unsmoked one here uh, that we're going to take a closer look at. This one has a protruding vein that goes down the body, but I actually found this to be extremely rare. Most of the scars are very, very well presented, very fine veins, very elegant, with a uh, straight roll, very nicely constructed, and a firm spring. It has a distinctive uh, cacao nib uh, hue, which gives off a rich oily sheen. And the aromas uh, that I experienced on the foot consisted of some leathery uh, musky labdanum, a little hint of uh, sweet salted caramel, uh, which just slightly gives you a little caramelized uh, minerality on the nose, as well as some cinnamon. Going into the pre-light, this gives an excellent draw with just the right level of resistance and uh, is quite rich in flavor, intriguingly very sweet as well. Uh, on this occasion, on the uh, dry draw, I experienced nutmeg rather than cinnamon, uh, some birch tar with a smoky essence, uh, even though it hadn't yet been lit, as well as rubos tea. Next, we'll talk about the palette and the overall smoking experience. So the first third blossoms with a rich bouquet of flavors. It's quite heavy on the minerals. Here I've largely experienced uh, clay, sort of terracotta, uh, quite moist as well. It wasn't too dry with a hint of cinnamon and some charred bay leaf, which offered a burnt aromatic texture. 
meanwhile, the second third uh, became a little more verbose in character and revealed another uh, mineral note of iron ore, the metallic aspect as well as the earthy uh, uh, facet of this note was particularly um, intriguing and alluring when it was also accompanied by notes of espresso, uh, espresso coffee, as well as some rich dark chocolate. Although the first third was probably a little bit more aromatic and playful, the second third started to really deliver some thicker notes, yet it never really became uh, overwhelming whatsoever. This is still an overall medium full smoke and remains relatively consistent throughout the whole experience. Moving to the uh, final third, uh, the final third starts to uh, unveil notes of black pepper. However, these are quite restrained. Uh, black pepper can sometimes be very overwhelming, but in this was definitely not the case. There was also an Argwood Oud experience in there that delivered some musky, resinous, leathery notes, uh, which were very pleasant given that the final note in the uh, final third that I think would best define this cigar was some saffron spice, and that when it paired with the argwood produced a very oriental uh, richness that was uh, exceedingly pleasant on the tongue and delivered a soft creamy mouthfeel. Although this is an overall complex cigar, it is not at all inaccessible. Indeed, you can really enjoy yourself by exploring its variety of notes without feeling lost uh, in the experience. Meanwhile, the mouthfeel throughout the whole, whole cigar is very creamy, it leaves a pleasant texture on the tongue, and its astringents and palate stimulation are very balanced. It doesn't, product, it doesn't cause too much salivation, nor does it leave a dry sensation on the tongue either. In terms of palate stimulation, you have the whole tongue that is nicely stimulated and tingled. It starts slightly towards the front at the beginning of the cigar, but as you make your way through the cigar, it spreads evenly uh, throughout the whole palate. And then in terms of life cycle, this wasn't a linear cigar by any means. There was a distinctive evolution through uh, each third with uh, different points where you experienced uh, unique and uh, exciting transitions. As for the uh, finish, it's quite lingering. It lasts very nicely on the tongue. So if you were enjoying perhaps a, a lovely scotch with the cigar, uh, you could probably enjoy an espresso as a palate cleanser and still marry those flavors quite nicely. As for the residual scent in the room, it is overall quite pleasant if you're smoking indoors. It's not going to cling onto anything. It's not, um, it's not too overbearing, but uh, it, isn't, it is going to stay there for a while. It may cling to the curtains for a bit. With regard to the uh, overall combustion and burn of the cigar, so the uh, draw was consistent throughout the whole experience. It did not tighten, it did not loosen, it was very pleasant. The temperature of the cigar, as this is a very small Vitola, it rewards slow smoking. If you smoke it too fast, it has a tendency to get hot, which will burn those aromatic compounds and lead to a relatively unpleasant smoking experience. However, if you smoke it very slowly, it will be much more subtle, refined, and give you a very pleasurable experience indeed. In terms of the burn line, as you can see, there is some waviness here. I haven't touched up this cigar at all, so that's perfectly fine, but it isn't going to be a straight razor sharp burn. And similarly, the uh, ashback bone here is reasonably strong, but it has a tendency to get flaky, especially on this Vitola. On the larger Vitolas, it does hold on much better. As for the overall experience, I really like uh, Mombacho's branding. They went through a bit of a facelift a couple of years ago, and the original style still carried this uh, abstract uh, triangle, which is meant to represent the Mombacho volcano that overlooks Granada, uh, hence the name. Um, but they've gone for a, 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 a much more elegant uh, style that really embodies the, uh, the sort of native Latin American uh, culture with the uh, style of text and scrolling on the side. Uh, the secondary band says says Chiao Volcan. Uh, they do have other lines as well, which such as Casa Fedeli, which is going to say uh, that instead. There's one little detail I really want to show you with uh, the bands here, and this is really what this, uh, one of the many things about Mombacho cigars that distinguishes itself as a boutique blend. If you take the band off, you'll see on the back that there is a date and a year stamped on there. And it's not a precise date; it's a month and a year. This tells you when this cigar was rolled. Therefore, you're going to have a very good idea when this was produced, how long it's been aging, and uh, the amount of time it took from the rolling process to get into your hands. And I really like this attention to detail. It's things like this 
that make a brand like Mombacho really stand out and distinguish itself. As for the box, uh, I have it just here. So this box was uh, came from uh, Passion Pure. So I'd like to thank uh, Claudio uh, Zagroy and Passion Pure for uh, helping me uh, get one of these. Uh, the box has the same classic design um, as the uh, band which I've removed. So I'm trying to show you, but there's no point. It's a classic sliding box. So uh, I'm not overly fond of these personally. They're very functional and they do very well, but uh, I do prefer it when the box has hinges. Nevertheless, it helps, keeps prices down as it's a lot less expensive to produce and also allows you to carry much more volume in a smaller space. So it can positively, positively affect the price. Uh, the box also features the label at the bottom as well as the format. Another detail, which is quite interesting, uh, apologies, uh, this was uh, from Germany, so it's covered in these stickers, but as you can see there is a uh, production uh, batch code which is handwritten on the back of every box. As for the value of the uh, Mombacho Tierra Volcan, uh, it uh, is I think a very good price for what it represents. Uh, normally a price for a single is around $10 and a box of 12 should be around 130 something in uh, that price range there and given that it is a Nicaraguan Puro made by a boutique blend who has a very limited production capacity because it really focuses on quality and attention to detail you're getting a very good price for what is a extremely uh, refined experience and leading on to that the occasion as this has a very understated design it can be smoked almost anywhere at any occasion you can take this to a, a lavish cigar lounge or a special occasion or even a formal occasion and it'll fit right in in fact because it's so elegantly presented it would go quite nicely with uh, with a, a double cuff shirt and a well dressed uh, suit of clothes um, Otherwise, it can still be enjoyed with, uh, with a couple of friends around a barbecue or even on your own for a quiet moment of contemplation. So this is an extremely versatile cigar. Finally, we will talk about the pairings. And this is just a consideration we have at the bottom right of the cigar formula. It is not scored. It's just something uh, that we like to suggest. Uh, it's a great exercise for thinking about what the cigar could be paired with. Uh, first of all, in terms of food pairings, I'm going to start with cured ham. I believe the smokiness and the uh, rich mineral flavours of maybe a prosciutto or a jambon de bayon uh, would really help uh, bring out these mineral and gourmand flavours in the cigar. Otherwise, dark chocolate, and dark chocolate specifically, perhaps by Argent Cove, why not? Uh, Argent Cove is a small artisanal uh, producer of chocolate in Granada, it's just down the road from Mombacho, and as it's an artisanal brand, it focuses on small batch production and uh, quality. So you'd have two very similar uh, philosophies that you could marry in one single experience. Otherwise, a uh, grilled prime rib would be a, uh, another dish that I would recommend, certainly at a barbecue. Uh, a nice thick steak, it's nicely grilled on the outside, perhaps with a couple of aromatics uh, to, uh, uh, to marinate in, and then a nice red interior. The uh, gourmand experience would uh, pair well with the cigar. As for beverages, uh, my first suggestion would probably be an Añejo uh, rum, uh, an aged rum such as a Flor de Caña, a Flor de Caña 18, which is also from Nicaragua, would be a great choice. Otherwise, you could certainly try a Diplomatico. But if you're going to have Diplomatico, then your best bet would be to have a Diplomatico cigar, which is manufactured by Mombacho. Uh, alternatively, an espresso would be a great choice, perhaps even a Ristretto. Uh, the problem with a Ristretto is just it's very, very small and this is quite a, a long cigar, so it is quite frustrating. Otherwise, you could have a long black, which is where you pour the hot water in first and then you add the espresso. Like that, you can still have a little bit of crema on top. And finally, if you're somebody who enjoys single malt whiskey, this would be an excellent uh, pairing suggestion with the cigar. I would particularly go for perhaps an Isla single malt. The peatiness of those whiskey expressions would really bring out the perhaps iron ore and minima minerality of this cigar. So that's all for me today. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please give us a like and please follow us, especially if you're interested in more cigar reviews and other men's lifestyle content. Until next time, I'm CP, you're on Bespoke Unit, take care.